Call to order. Please refrain from talking amongst yourselves during the meeting, and please turn off or put on vibrate on all phones and cell, cell phones and pagers. If you need to talk, please leave the meeting room. Anyone who wishes to speak, including applicants, is asked to completely fill out one of the speaker cards provided at the table by the front door and submit it to staff. You will be called to present a case or speak on any specific item as desired. Anyone who wishes to be re-noticed about a project must completely fill out one of the postcards provided at the table by the front door and submit it to staff to receive notice of subsequent meetings. Current Design Review Board agendas are available by calling our Design Review Board hotline at 818-548-3171 or by visiting our website at www.ci.glendale.ca.us. A handout describing the procedures of the meeting, possible board decisions, and design review board reconsideration and appeals is available at the table by the front door. Please note that appeals must be filed within 15 calendar days of the design review board decision date, and that would be today. The chairperson may reorder agenda items at his or her discretion. Roll call. Board member Aliano is not present. Board member Ellis? Present. Board member Insua is not present yet. Board Member Simonian? Present. Chairman Yu? Here. Report regarding posting of the agenda. The agenda for this meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside City Hall at or before 5 p.m. on March 26, 2009. Oral communications. I do not have any oral communication cards. I don't either. None. All right. Thank you. We can proceed directly to the calendar. There are no staff announcements at this time, and there are no items on the consent calendar, which leads us to the first case on tonight's agenda. Well, welcome to Design Review Board uh, 1. Uh, we have three cases before us today. Uh, let's proceed to the first one, A1-PDR 2008 080A at 3943 Birdway. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. As indicated, the project is located at 3943 Burt Way. Burt Way is located north of Foothill, just <laughs> east of Lowell Avenue, which is very close to the bound county boundary line between Glendale and L.A. County, just for point of reference. And it is very, very close to the foothills. It's a few blocks away from the mountain. Um, Again, this is a first-time submittal for final review. The applicant is proposing to remodel the exterior facade and add a 1,534-square-foot addition, including a new second floor to the existing 1,416-square-foot, one-story single-family house, which currently has a two-car attached garage, and the lot size is 7,510 square feet. Currently, the project is developed with a one-story single-family house. And what I'll do at this point is go up to the board and walk you through the location of the additions because they're located at various areas. And then I'll go back into the analysis of the staff report. So as indicated, um, they're proposing 911 square feet, and that would be the second story. And the second story is primarily centered along with the, according to the existing first-story floor plan. The Second addition would be 623 square feet on the first floor, and that would be the front, the rear, and the side. So if we look at the floor plan, and I'll just kind of walk you through it, basically the shaded areas indicate where the additions will take place. And also she submitted a, a demo plan, which is right in here, so we, keep, we can locate where the, addition, the existing floor plan is and how it relates to the addition. So basically it's almost every single point in this house is being remodeled and expanded. Therefore, they are complying with today's, or they're proposing to comply with our current um, zoning regulations because more than 50% of the existing exterior walls combined roof will be removed and therefore they would lose any non-conforming conditions. As part of the changes, um, again, the, the main change in addition to the addition will be the exterior remodel. As indicated in your staff report, and that would be under the design changes, get to it. They are proposing to change the existing ranch style design to a more craftsman with some Spanish ranch style motifs. 
Um, some of the exterior design changes involve, again, replacing the existing stucco with new smooth steel trial stucco finish, new wood-like siding, hardy board, or similar new roof materi material, and I've passed around the material board. A new aluminum clad wood window, and we also have, again, some additional features on the house, which, which will be accented with stone quarried from the property, including for the chimney and from the front, for the front porch pedestal. The roof design, again, will change. The new design will include gables and hip roof designs. And the addition will be, again, constructed with smooth stucco finish. Some areas will include a wood-like siding, which, again, serves to articulate the building facade and also design improvement for the house. The existing windows, as indicated earlier, will be replaced with aluminum-clad windows, and that includes both slider and casement windows. This type of material is appropriate, so we do support the use of this type of uh, wood uh, window material. They will also include a wood trim and an exterior timber lintel with a quarter-inch projection above the window and the windows will be recessed with a one and a half inch recess with a bull nose at the corners and the jams and heads. Additional wood finishes are being proposed throughout the house and that would include for example the new wood garage door and would match the existing wood finishes or wood like finishes on the house and again the reason why they're using this type of wood like finish again is because the house is located in a high fire zone area again because they are close to the mountains so there are specific requirements as it relates to the type of building material that they would be allowed to use in this area now going to are there any questions by the way regarding the design again the architects here so she can go into more detail regarding her this particular project uh, regarding mass and scale, obviously the mass will change because they are proposing a second story addition, but again, it, it's, it's located in a certain centered area of the house which doesn't appear to be as massive or proposed to be a major <coughs> massive um, piece as from viewed from the street. And again, the house is located somewhere on, on an inclined slope, so again, again, it, it tends to minimize uh, the the, the mass that it could um, impact if you were driving around and considering a, if it were compared to a flat condition. Um, the board, excuse me, the uh, staff felt that the project um, does comply with um, the existing condition or the neighborhood context and the design guidelines. We had one consideration, a uh, condition to consider. So I indicated there were approved with conditions. So it's actually one consideration that was to consider using permeable, permeable paving for the new driveway. That would, because they are replacing the new driveway anyways, it would be required to be decorative and we are encouraging the use of permeable driveway, or permeable material rather. Again, as it relates to site planning, the existing uh, site plan conditions will be maintained and is therefore consistent with the general neighborhood pattern. Mass and scale, the addition integrates well with the existing floor plan and site plan. The new second floor addition will be significantly set back from the front property line and a variation of roof, style, roof styles have been incorporated in order to minimize potential building mass as viewed from the street. The addition overall size of the building is not out of context in relation to the general neighborhood and therefore the project's mass and scale is consistent with the neighborhood. And lastly, the building and design and detailing, the proposed materials for the addition complements and enhances the overall design of the house and are compatible. And the proposed changes are in keeping with the craftsman influence and appropriate for the overall neighborhood character. That concludes my presentation. I've passed around, again, the material board, the photos, and a sample of uh, a home nearby that the applicant worked on the architect and as a sample and she's mm -hmm. kind of trying to to mimic in this in this design as well. Do, have you gotten any samples of uh, the windows, or do we have a cut sheet of the? I window? do have a cut sheet right here. Okay. And I actually have oh, one. Oh, that was in our drawings as well. Right. That's right. Okay. And I have a blown up one as well in the file. Right. And um, the material of the garage door. Yes. Um, and the roof. I have questions on those two. The material board has four different colors. Do you know which one they're proposing? 
I'll have address. the applicant <laughs> address that. Okay. Well, then I'll address the second question with him as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I think you're going for the mix. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm? No other questions for Rogo? Okay. Okay, the first card you have is Yolanda Costlin, designer. If you could just state your name and address for the record. My name is Yolanda McCoslin, 11431 Clybourne Avenue, Lakeview Terrace, California, 91342. Okay. I'm the project designer for, the, for this design, for this home. Um, we tried to incorporate all the features or the special features that this house has. It is on the foothills of the property. It has a lot of mature trees. Uh, it's a corner property, so we were very considerate on the second story addition. Um, we tried to have the second story in the middle of the house surrounding by a lot of roof lines. That way we don't have any two-story planes um, that would uh, minimize the, uh, the bulk of the second floor. Um, all the features that we have um, in try to incorporate the landscaping that it has. It has a lot of uh, pine trees, oak trees, and even the colors that we selected try to match the surrounding of the property. Um, so if you have any questions? Do we have any questions for her? Yes, uh, uh, the roof material uh, as, uh, from the sample board, do you plan on mixing all these four colors or is it going to be? No, it's a mixture. It's a, it's a combined mixture of all the colors. Of all the colors. Yes. And um, the garage door, you plan on just using a, uh, a wood garage door and then staining That's it? That's the stain, yes. And uh, the fire department requested the hardy panels, so we replaced the wood siding that we had with a hardy panel, but it will have a stain to match that, and also the eaves. The eaves are all heavy timber, too. I see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's it for now. If we have any other questions, we'll call you back then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next card, we have uh, Terry Cobra. Um, as the owner, would you like to come up and say something? Uh, my name is Wade Colbert. I'm the owner of the property at 3943 Burrett Way. Um, we've lived in this neighborhood for 13 years, and um, now that we have a family and our daughters are growing up, our oldest is approaching 18 years, we feel that square footage and space is at a premium. So we're expanding our property. We love this neighborhood, so we'd like to stay in, instead of move away. And um, everything about um, the neighborhood we like, we just need a little more square footage. So. Yolanda, we met her about two years ago, and she's designed this beautiful house, so we're hoping that we can build it. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. I don't have any other cards. Is there anyone else here to speak on that project? No? Okay. I'll close it, and uh, we'll discuss. It's jealous. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to start. Um, I went up and visited the site and uh, I guess my one concern at the time was um, if the neighbors were going to be upset with a second story in but this is done uh, very nicely and uh, no neighbors are here we have never heard no response from them so I think they must be happy um, the, my only two comments and, and I'll kind of defer back to you can actually maybe I should have asked the, the designer um, location of the uh, air conditioning units and things are in, cited in a way that they're not next to the neighbor since you're on a side lot we'd like to see that on that cul-de-sac side um, and then I guess the only area that really does jump as a second story is on the cul-de-sac side I guess that's the west side um, but then again it, it is split up and I you know I kind of look back to you two guys to see if, if what time of comments you have here but I, I'm ready to support the project as it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. thank you I agree. I, I think that it's designed well. The use of materials are nice. Uh, it, it's got a contemporary look to it, but at the same time, a lot of the materials are traditional. I happen to uh, think that the massing has uh, been portrayed nicely. It, it gives us a lot of views, which helps us understand 
how the building will look. Um, and, and I do agree with him. You know, we have the, it has this kind of a central axis over here, which is very uh, dominant from the cold of the from the cul-de-sac cul side. However, uh, it is stepped back from the street side, mm -hmm. and, and, and so that only occurs for a little bit or a short period of time as one is driving by, whereas in the majority of the streetscape uh, is mass and is, uh, reducing the mass and the bulk. So overall, I could support the project as well. I think the, the windows will be uh, a nice addition. I'm a little concerned about the rock on the uh, on the on the chimney. I'm not sure how they're going to match it. If that's a a stone veneer or if that's actual stone, it indicates to match the existing. Uh, I, I guess we can't. Well, but uh, I think staff could handle that. Uh, they go um, down the road. Yeah, uh, one thing that. Uh, I remember being impressed by, and I don't know if this is noted on the drawings, is that the applicant mentioned that uh, they were going to use stone found on the site. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, which which That's now we're, right. when we have a, an applicant that is doing a ho house in this area, because that stone is so characteristic of the area, we cite this particular designer as saying that that was what she was doing, and isn't that such a great idea? Well, I, I think that's a good use of it. it. Certainly will blend in. So overall, I could support the project. It's a modest addition, mm -hmm. and um, job well done. Well, I think starting off, I think uh, the designer has done a good job in, in the addition. I think the colors work well. Um, you know, and the picture that shows sort of the, a previous project that you did kind of gives us a sense for what it's really going to look like instead of just a rendering. So I think that's a good good idea to put that in there. Um, I just have a few areas that um, I'm a little concerned about, but I think that, you know, maybe those are things that you could probably change as you go along. Uh, the first thing is I noticed on the second story addition, um, overlaying it to the first floor, your walls don't line up at all. They're, they're just sort of it's floating in. Yeah. Um, we could, well, if you just take notes on that, we'll, we'll bring you back up if, you know, to speak about it. But uh, that was just a sw small concern that I had. You know, it, was, it would just add to your structural costs if you if they don't line up at all. But uh, that's something that you could take care of when you're going through building and safety. Um, and another, in the rear of it, there's also that shed roof that with uh, two hips at the sides. And so another concern would be leaking through the crickets and stuff that you have there. But those are all technical issues there. Um, and one thing that maybe you could come up afterwards is to talk about how you have the heavy timber lintel on some of the windows, but you don't on some of the other ones. And so I guess I wanted to see what your thoughts were on that, um, how you were applying that, where you thought it was needed, it wasn't needed. Uh, some of the windows seem a little big on the face of it, uh, especially for that style. Um, and so maybe I could open it up and have her come up and just talk about some of those items. I'll open it up. If you could come up again and state your name and address. Yolanda McCoslin, <laughs> on 1431 Clybourne Avenue, Lake Thanks. Terrace, <laughs> California. Um, let me see if I can address your issues. Um, let me first uh, approach the issue about the rear facade. Uh, the paths of these houses are in stepping. So our building, even though it's in the corner and it's on an uphill side, as you're driving to the Caldex side, you will notice that the back of the property is four foot six to five feet above ours. So actually the second story, if you're at the neighbor's property, is almost at the level at the, the first floor. So it really is not an impact, especially too with all the trees that you have when you drive by, you cannot see the, the back that much. It's a very minor um, second story. The other issue that we have in the back where we have the shed roof, mm -hmm. we wanted to have the two-story volume, but not a complete two-story volume. So it's like one and a half. And the shed roof, which is their family room, is uh, hidden by the two gables. So when you're approaching from the street, you don't see that at all. And not unless you're standing at the property line in the garage of the neighbors, you can see that directly. So. 
Um, I think that was one of your concerns. So really the, the modifications of the roof lines are, um, are in direct with the surroundings and how you approach the house. Right. So we're trying to limit the volumes of the two stories, uh, especially when you're driving up to the uh, cul-de-sac area or to um, Barrett Way. Could you continue the shed area to both sides of the hip? And no, it? because if I do that, then what happened is that if I raise that roof higher, it's going to be too massive, and then we don't have, in the back of the property has some gorgeous views up to the mountain. And if you look at the, where the fireplace is, you have two big windows. That's their master bedroom. Right. And the owners wanted to take advantage of all the views in the property. And um, in the family room where you have the shed roof, we do have our French doors, and we have a lot of clear stories because even though you're in the first floor, you still have a direct view to the mountains mm -hmm. on the top. And we wanted to bring a, as much light as we could. And if we bring the roof lines all the way with the top plate up to the um, second mm -hmm. floor, it will look too massive from the side. So well, actually, I was thinking on the sides continuing it out just to meet the hip area. Uh, on the sides, uh, I think that will catch a little bit more problems. What, what, you're speaking about the rear facade on the north elevation? Uh, yeah, the, yeah, the just top here one. Here. Yeah, he wanted to extend it. If you extended those out. Yeah. I think on the elevations there. Yeah. Okay. So what we can do is uh, we have the wall and then we flash it and crick it, so that shouldn't cause a lot of problems. Okay. If, if you don't see it as a concern, then... No. Okay. <laughs> okay uh, the third about the with the lintels. Uh, lintels. The lintels. Okay. All the windows actually have lintels. If it is on the stucco, uh, we did not add it the lintels where it has the hardy panels because we felt there was too much wood. Yeah. And mm -hmm. over, yeah. So the only ones that don't have the lintels is where you have the um, the heavy siding. There's actually a few areas that are stucco that don't have the lintels. Um, can you maybe come up here and maybe show us? Yeah, the only that one that I can see that doesn't have it is over the kitchen window on the side. Come up and speak in the microphone. Come. Here's a here's a pointer. Yeah, which is which is this one right here. This one's right here. And the only reason why... And where why is that over here? This is over here. And this one's over here. Oh, okay. And then this one's in here. And then we have these here. Is that the same one? Yeah. But this is the kitchen area. And this is the family room area. What's the reason for not having it? It's too high? Yeah, well, on this side... Uh, we wanted to take advantage of the views because this house has views all the way around the property, even though it's on the low side. Mm -hmm. So if we put the lintels in here, the lintels are pretty big. They're about eight inches. Right. And by the time I put the eight inches and still give them the clear story window, it's too close to the to the uh, to the eaves. Now all the eaves have all this heavy timber, as you see on the other home, and it just gets very very heavy. We place the lintels like in this type of feature where we have the little uh, decorative uh, window with wrought iron. This one fits. This one we don't have the clear story, but if I lose the clear story, uh, they lose the view. Mm -hmm. So we decide, and this part is in the corner of the property. The other um, corner, it's not visible yes, from the street. So it's not really visible corner. from the street. So we took advantage of the views in here in this corner because right here is the two neighbors. So this corner here is over here, and here's the neighbors. But this property basically has views on this side and all the way around here because the houses are set back. So there's views all over surrounding the property. So the window intent on this is more correct than the rendering, right? Well, it's right here. I think yeah. this is centered on the rendering. And on yeah, the like this one. So this is more correct, right? Oh, they're all correct. Well, this one is off. It's off to, to the side. side. And this one's this centered. Up to the side. Well, this is the existing, and the gray area is the addition. Okay. I just wanted to show you because in here I we see. have the properties. So if you look in this one, this is the actual proposed floor plan. So this window that you here see here is this one here. I see. It's the gray portion of the. Yeah. And then this one here are the windows here on the side. This one is centered, right? 
Well, it's because. But uh, this one, I'm just, I'm just trying to get it straight on which one. Yeah, you it depends to on the angle too. <laughs> yeah, but it looks on the. That's definitely centered. That looks, that's, a, that's that's that looks a little bit on the center side, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit on the center. I'm not going to, yeah. yeah. Uh, we little just little want to get your intent on which one we want to look at it more like this. Well, you probably want to look at your plan and what makes yeah. sense in your plan. But centered it's or off-center? It looks like it's off-center. It's like this. It's off-center. Okay. So, so it, the elevation is correct. This and the rendering correct is. And the rendering got modified. Yeah. Okay. We were playing with Actually, giving it, looks better it in the center. <laughs> it does look better centered. The problem with the center, if you look at the floor plan, it kind of destroys the, the feature that they right. want. Uh, at the end of the day, it's at the other corner, so it's not visible yeah. from it's the street. It's not visible from the street. Uh, I was the, trying to. The lintels, it's, it's always nice to get them all copacetic and uh, yes. uh, have a sim similar look around the mm -hmm. building. In this case, it's it's fairly well hidden in, right. in the corner on the on that side. We do have a lot of heavy timber on the eaves, and even in the other part where it doesn't have the lintels in here. Uh, we do have a lot of exposed rafters underneath. The, the, the what sort of um, sliding door system is that? Those are the, the marbling, the marbling, the fixed panels, and only one will move over. So these are all fixed panels, so they're similar, and then only one moves to the side. Oh, so, all, so there are three of the panels are fixed, and one is? One is a slider, yes. One is a slider, so it just slides three feet? Yeah. One of the nice clean look. <coughs> While, while you're here, do you know where you're planning to put the uh, air conditioning units? Or has, that, has that been? Uh, uh, I, I kind of looked around. It didn't. I couldn't see the existing ones on the on the plan. It may not exist. Right now, the existing, I believe, is here on the side. Okay. And we have a lot of trees, and it's not in the front yard setback or right. rear setback. Yeah, so I mean, we that have would be the. Room to, and we wanted to keep it hidden. Yeah, I mean, I realize because there's no house here. You yeah. Know, someplace back in there. Yeah, and you can see that there, you know. This is the driveway, and you can see how it slopes up. Right. And right now in the back, they have uh, all greenery around the, the units, and you can't see the units. Right, okay. Okay. What, what is that? And one last question. What is this door over here? That's to the garage. Oh. Side yard to the garage. You can see right now on the existing, well, you can back. And it's on the other side anyway. Yes, it's okay. over right. It's all right. right here. Thank you. And, oh, and the stone, all these walls that you have here are from the local stone. So we want to maintain the same feature that they have. These are all, uh, it's not an imitation, it's local stone. And, and you have plenty in the, in the backyard Once to use? Once they start digging all this, a lot of rock comes up. Great. The uh, permeable driveway, that's uh, workable for oh, you? Yeah, I was yes. going to ask that. Okay. I think they, they were intending to do that. And what sort of material do you want to use on that, on the permeable driveway? We have right. our papers, I see. the tumble stone papers, uh -huh. but we haven't determined the style. Okay. 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 I think Thank we can you. work that out. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, let's close it back up. And uh, do we have any motion to consider? Uh, I'll move to accept with... Uh, the staff's consideration, or I don't know if we want to make it a condition. Um, the pavers? Yeah, the, the permeable, permeable? permeable stone. Okay. I'd rather keep it as a consideration because I don't want to set a precedent. Gotcha. Yeah, I understand. No, so so I'll, uh, every time, yeah. I'll support it as staff has written then. Okay. I'll second it. Okay, and I'll go over some of the um, comments that I heard. Earlier I, I heard about the locating the, I know that the applicant already addressed it, but this is what I heard earlier, so I wrote it. Locate the air conditioning unit, or let's call it mechanical equipment, mechanical equipment. and trash area in the cold sack side, which would be the northwest side of the of the site in compliance with zoning regulations, and that would cover out being outside right. this, any setbacks. I don't know if I would include the... The trash area? Yeah, I mean, if they have a garage, you know. Okay. I bet uh, I'll look to you guys. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, okay. So I'll just leave mechanical equipment. Right. And the other comment was to consider extending the shed roof at the rear to the gable and the hip roof on the sides. Just a consideration. Okay, I'll leave it as a consideration. Right. And again, lastly, the consideration that we included in the report to consider using permeable paving for the driveway. 
And that was a motion by Board Member Ellis and a second by Board Member Simonian. That would be approved with conditions. Board Member Ellis? Yes. Board Member Simonian? Yes. Chairperson Yu? Yes. Motion carries 3 0. Thank you. Thank you. You're done. Thank you. <laughs> we'll go to the second case. Start on that case. homework. <laughs> you still need to maintain the story polls until the 15 day appeal period's over. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Don't change anything. Next case, uh, 1 PDR 2008 084 A 3941 Altura Avenue. And now it's mine again. again. Oh. Just it. Getting all the information together. Here are this is the material board and the photos for this next project. Thank you. Oh, I got you. Okay. Just got two in a row, huh? Yeah. She planned it that way. Yeah. <laughs> she wants to get home to that baby. She Let me do it the other way because I have more photos. next project is located at 3941 Altura Avenue and this again project is located in the North Glendale area in the foothills again just east of Lowell Avenue just east of LA County Glendale boundary line except it's south of Foothill Boulevard the applicant is proposing to remodel the exterior facade and construct a 1339 square foot floor area addition to the existing single-family home and it currently has a two-car detached garage but they are also proposing to add 219 square feet to the rear of that existing garage the property again has a single-family house currently located on the property and it's a topography consists of gently sloping terrain it is 15,168 square feet is the size of the lot and the house was constructed in 1945. Again, the existing house is 1,368 square feet. It has a detached garage. And the addition, once with the addition and with the existing house combined, the total floor area will be 2,707 square feet. And the garage area will be 599 square feet. So again, the additions will be located. They're projecting forward about three and a half feet. As you can tell at the front, they're expanding that, I believe it's the family room. And they're incorporating a new picture window as well. They are adding a new court, little covered entry and a little court in the front. The existing front setback of 40, about approximately 40 feet, eight inches from the face of the front building to the property line will remain, so there's no change. And the bulk of the addition will be located at the rear of the existing house. And that, again, you can is noted on the site plan, and we can see here in the proposed floor plan compared to the existing floor plan where they're expanding the floor area at the rear. The zone is R1, floor area ratio district 2. So they need to comply with a 0 .40 for the first 10,000 square feet and 0 .10 for each square footage of lot thereafter. So they are within the allowable FAR at this point. Are there any questions regarding any sections in the report? The neighborhood comparison? Okay. Regarding the design and the detailing, the applicant is proposing again to add the bulk of the addition at the rear. And as it relates to the architecture, the existing house is a ranch style design. So obviously they're proposing to significantly change that and completely renovating and changing the architectural style to a contemporary version of Spanish colonial revival architecture. So again, in order to accomplish this, all new material is being proposed. They have 
uh, they're incorporating new roof tile. And they're in this case we're pro they're proposing a two-piece mission clay roof tile, barrel shaped. They're proposing smooth stucco for the building facade and wood fascia painted to match the windows. The existing windows will be replaced with fiberglass windows to match the addition. It will have a wood trim and sill. The majority of the windows are operable casement or slider with the exception of a fixed picture window at the front. We did encourage, we did make a comment about the window located along the right or the front right side of the, of the front facade, however, due to certain fire requirement that needs to be operable and for that reason they're not able to comply with that recommendation. Is it a bedroom? Oh, it yes, is it's a bedroom. A bedroom. And, and do you require two operable windows in a bedroom? I don't know all the fire requirements. I'll have the applicant address that. Just need one. Yeah, you could have it on the side. Of the yeah, because there's a side window there. I, that was a question I had. Yep. Okay. But we'll bring that up with Mr. Okay, and as indicated earlier, there, the, the roof material is being changed. And initially they were proposing S tile, but, or at least it appeared by the roof material that in the material board that was S tile, the one piece which we don't recommend, we re recommend the more traditional style, which would be the two piece barrel shaped mission clay tile. And that's what they are proposing. That's why I've, I've passed around the, the roof tile catalog. Okay. Regarding the mass, again, they're, they're just maintaining the, a one story condition, so that's not significantly changing at all, um, except, of course, the size of the house will increase. The last section would be the recommendation, or at least I'd like to go over the recommendation noted in the report. We do recommend board approval for the proposed project because it is compatible with the overall neighborhood context. Staff also recommends the following to be considered, and that would be to use, again, permeable paving for the driveway, uh, to use just, again, to emphasize to make sure to use the two-piece barrel clay, barrel clay roof tile. Work with staff again to provide a location for the trash enclosure and for any mechanical equipment. Site planning. The proposed site planning, landscape, and parking appears to be consistent with the majority of the homes in the neighborhood and design guidelines. The existing site plan conditions will be maintained and is therefore consistent with the general neighborhood pattern. The location of the addition is appropriate for the site in the neighborhood. Regarding mass and scale, the overall mass and scale, the building will not significantly change as the building appears from the street. And no changes are being made to the front setback. Minor changes to the overall height and a substantial floor area will take place at the rear. And the addition is not out of context in relation to the general neighborhood. And lastly, the proposed materials, details, and architectural expression of the house enhance the overall design are compatible. I did pass around an email that was sent by an interested party. I don't have any more information than what was sent to me, again, regarding name and address. Um, however, they, I believe they noted that they're not in support of the project. And if there's anyone else here in the audience, then obviously you'll hear from them. Thank you. I have a get question, Mr. Clark. Yes. Um, is this a, considered a new project? based on the amount of change that they're doing, or is it? Well, they are not removing more than 50% of the combined exterior walls and roof. Okay. So as it relates to any non-conforming status, right. there are none at this point that would be affected. OK. Do you know what this room is? I thought it was a, another closet, but I will have the applicant okay. address that. Right, because I, I was wondering about yeah, this was these area. Are numbered if these there are was any issues with the form. I believe this is just basically oh, based okay. on the there site plan, okay. just a walkway. Which is right. part of our right. open area. Okay. okay, but you could put it on that. Okay, because it goes with, better with that. So. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the first card we have is from our. The architect and the applicant, Franco Naragan. If you could Good state afternoon. your name and address. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, board members. Uh, Franco Naravian, 409 West Broadway, Glendale, California, 91204. I am the architect for the project. Um, basically, because of the um, 
size of the lot, and we're able to keep it all one story. So even though we're adding uh, substantial square footage from the street, this is not going to look any different than any of the other like 1,800 or 1,500 square foot homes. Um, this is a, you know, it's not the owner's first choice for the architectural style, but he was happy with this, so so we went with this because we think it blends in with the with the neighborhood better. Um, the windows in the front are all recessed, um, and uh, and the ones visible from the street. I uh, I think you see on that uh, page with the garage, there's a detail of how they will be done. There are fiberglass outside, but wood inside. It's integrity. Uh, so, mm -hmm. uh, and I put the front ones. I put a wood sill. The ones that are recessed. Um, let's see. Your question about that room in the bedroom. That's a closet. Okay. There, there's two closets. His and hers. Uh, and then we do have a little courtyard area. You were referring to the space between the garage and the family room. Yeah. It's basically needs to be there because we cannot be attached to the garage. Well, right. That, that was kind of what I was wondering. It seemed, uh, and that was a question of how close the garage, the existing garage to the house. If it was a new construction, you couldn't get away with that. I don't think. Could you get that? Close? No, yeah, we could. Five, five foot eve to eve? Yeah, five foot eve to eve. Eve to eve. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, um, the addition to the garage, is yes. that intended the, to? Uh, the addition to the garage is because the garage is smaller than today's 20 by 20 garages, and we don't want to have to redo it. Uh, it's a space so that they can have it for storage so that they can park their cars in the garage. Otherwise, by the time you put storage on the sides of the garage, there's not enough right. room to park okay. a car in there. There's no uh, utilities other than electricity out to that garage? No. No, no. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and one last question for you. Yes. Envision the landscaping in the front yard? Is uh, there, what, anything changing other than... Uh, well, I'm sure there'll be probably a couple of new trees and... Okay. Uh, we didn't do anything yet because, you know, right. it's existing, but I'm sure you'll do a new landscaping when it's all done. And we have no problem with the, the pavers. Uh, obviously, we're thinking of doing that Wait, anyways. it's a brand new driveway, I noticed, yeah. at the house. They're going to tear out the driveway and do another one? Uh, well, yikes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I need a driveway at home, and I'm looking at the cost of a driveway. So I, when I saw that and I noticed that you were talking about replacing it, I was... Uh, if you want to leave it as a um, consideration in case the Got project you. goes over budget, then we. Do that. <laughs> are, we are we talking about the permeable, <laughs> permeable driveways? That was a re was that a recommendation? It's a recommendation. Okay. Yeah. Right. Because the the location of the driveway is not changing. It's no, staying no. the same place. The driveway and the garage are staying. He's already accounting for it and already put in the papers on the rendering. On the rendering, yes. Yeah. So <laughs> that's what it was done. Done deal, right? <laughs> Do you uh, know about the trash enclosure and, and a mechanical um, at all? Has there been any discussion on those? Having mechanical equipment doesn't have to go in the side yard. There's plenty of room in the, in the, you know, on the side in the driveway. You have a really wide driveway, so we could put it there or in the court area. Uh, trash, we haven't talked about it. Probably next to the garage because the, there's still another three feet to the, and I believe in single family you can put trash in the side yard, right? No. No. Okay. Well then, uh, <laughs> we'll find we'll find a place for it. We'll work with staff to. I mean, unless now that you have more space in the garage, if you want to, as long as garage. it's outside the required outside. parking, then you could put it in the garage. In the garage. Okay. That would work. Okay. Do we have any other questions for? Um, oh, the issue on the window in that one room. Uh, oh, at, the bedroom. Uh, the, is staff recommending that that window to be fixed? No, oh. we we it in the staff report it's mentioned that we discussed it with you that we would prefer to have it fixed. fixed? But after having a conversation with you, right. you mentioned that that was not possible due right. to fire requirements. Fire. No, the fire requirements we can get away with having only one window that's for egress. But it's nice to have an operable window. Right. We're proposing a casement window, so. Um, sure, and if it's going to be the same look to it, then it's yeah. better to. Okay. The, uh, the elevations, the color elevations, depict uh, wood lint, wood um, really uh, frames all the way around the window. So you have it on the sills, you have them on the jams, and you have it on the header. Mm, no, that's why I, I, later on I did that. The, yeah, the detail the is different. Yes. So the idea is to recess them and then just have the. 
sill are so just as, as spot, wood uh, because yeah. the, the detail depicts wood sill and right. everything else is some stucco stucco correct and, and the elevations the color elevations have you know the wood trim all the way around it right so is the idea so you're it's just the bottom so there's right. going to be no uh, wood lintels or anything like that so all you see is just a frame of the window then right right um, you mentioned that the the client is not happy with the design. Oh. Uh, yeah, <laughs> well, well, we, we we had a different design, more of a Mediterranean style first. I see, and it's and evolved into this. It evolved into this, okay. correct? Yeah. Was there a, a particular reason for the for that bay window on the side? Bay window. Kind of pops out. It's, oh, that's the kitchen. Right, but. It's um, Somewhat I think it's odd. there already. There, there's an existing uh, kind of a box it. window. I think that so was just all I did is put a tile roof on it. I remember seeing that site of it. Uh, yeah, there, there's right? some okay. site pictures. Sorry, it's existing. I think but it's on the site pictures. For if you wanted it removed, we, we can do that. It is a really wide driveway, so as far as clearances, it's not going to be a problem. It, it, it just looks odd. But oh, yeah. then, then that's fine. We, we have no problem, too. Uh, the rear windows, mm -hmm. uh, these rear windows over here. Uh, right. So there's, a, there's an elevation difference in the backyard? Uh, yeah, the, back, the, the lot slopes up towards the back. Okay. So basically, because we don't want to have steps inside the house, uh, the back of the house will be slightly uh, digging it into. Yeah, I see. Right okay. into the ground. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. And this over here is this. Right. The French doors to the uh, master bedroom. Are you going to have some steps coming off of this? Uh, just yeah, one one and just one step you know, landing basically. I think by the time we get to that point, it's, we're going to be slab on grade. So. Yeah, it's a big landing you'll need because it's swinging out. So. Okay. okay. Do we have any other questions for? I don't. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, thank Michael. you, thank you. Uh, next card that we have is from Gregory Bogust. If you could just state your name again and uh, the address for the record. Good evening. My name is Gregory Bogust. I live at 3855 Altura Avenue, on the same street as uh, the proposed residence. Um, this house doesn't fit in at all in our neighborhood. Uh, they're all ranch-style homes. Um, I can't recall one tile red roof with a turret or any of the other features that are proposed on this particular project. Um, maybe you could hide it all with a bunch of bushes built in the front yard because there's none there right now, but I don't, I don't see how it fits in. Um, I have nothing more to say other than that. and This doesn't match the rest of the houses in the neighborhood. Thank okay. you. Do we have any questions for you? No, thank you. Thank you. Next card is Brenda Fink. Okay. <laughs> Sheldon, would you like to say something? Okay. And the last one we have is Charles, looks like Schmitz. Charles Schmitz, 3936 Altura. Thank you. I live right across the street from the house. Uh, I'm, I like the fact that they're going back, making it blend in. However, the facade of the house does not match the neighborhood there is the, on several points. You, you have continuity difference on the front windows. You have one window that's an arch. Then across you have a rectangular window. It doesn't work. There's not a house that has a turret. This house would look very good in the flats of Glendale. It does not fit this neighborhood. They're good neighbors. I'd like to see them do something nice, but I don't believe this will look I've got to look at this house every day when I walk out my house. And I just went through design review, went through an, an addition, and we took great pains to make a nice looking place. And this is 180 degrees opposite from it. It does not fit the neighborhood. 
nothing personal. That's my opinion. How do you feel about the house right next to it? To the left? Yeah. If I'm looking at it to the left? Yeah. Well, that's a whole other story. Lack of building permits on additions. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, let's not look house. at that. Just, I mean, I feel the about look it? of the house. It's horrendous. Okay. That doesn't fit the neighborhood. That was... It's got the cheapest windows you could possibly find, <laughs> except if you went down to Tijuana and got some for free. Um, the work done on that house was not permitted. It's in violation. It's if you you've driven by, you notice the little house on top of the house. The tower, yeah. Uh, yeah, to cover the air conditioner, the swamp pool on the roof. So. Okay. But that's not up for review today, is it? It's part of the neighborhood, though. <laughs> And there was not a review when that was done, so no one was given the opportunity to speak. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And I don't have any other cards. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on this project? No? Nope. Okay. Let's close it up and we'll discuss. Mr. Simonio, would you like to go first? Sure. Uh, as far as massing is, is concerned, uh, I believe the architect's done a good job with laying out the, the floor plan and the massing and, and the scale of it works. Uh, and in other words, you didn't go to a second story. You've maintained the one-story design. You've pushed back into the lot. And unfortunately, um, the client has a large lot. It's a rectilinear shape. It's deep, it's, and it allows for that addition. And uh, as far as the massing is concerned, uh, I believe the design does fit in. There uh, uh, is also a, a very simple approach to the roof, which I appreciate as well. You're just taking the existing roof and you're adding on to it, so you haven't really created any difficulties there. And uh, the comments and concerns that I have is really primarily with the uh, the materials and colors, which which is more of a minor um, thing as opposed to a major thing, uh, and again the design of it um, uh, and the massing, I, I think um, do fit in. Uh, as far as the the roofing material is concerned, uh, you've you know picked the Bermuda blend, which is a little bit bright, so we could probably tone that down. Uh, that's easy enough to do. As far as the stained uh, dark brown. Uh, it has a very, um, as far as the color uh, palette is concerned, it, it, it's very glossy and so it's very shiny It's uh, and I think that could be toned down. Uh, and uh, the the lintels um, as depicted in, in the facades I think are quite nice. I, I, I'm, I don't recommend perhaps um, you know having all four sides of the windows have wood trim. However, the, if we have a heavy timber on, on the top and maybe even on the sill, that certainly will help the design of it and it'll uh, soften it up and will make it more um, authentic uh, as far as this, the style is concerned. Um, the, the chimney head uh, could easily receive some sort of a cap, which will be a nice uh, um, ending to it. As far as um, the landscaping, uh, nothing has been you know, presented to us, uh, but a lot of it is existing. And um, so I, I think that's something you could work out with staff. Overall, I support the project. I, I think the major uh, concern of mine are, are just the color selections and so forth, which I think we could work with. Um, so again, just reiterating, I think if we could, uh, my concerns are the, are the tile roof, the window surrounds, uh, the chimney cap, and um, and also that bay window that kind of pops out uh, on the on the driveway side is is a little bit uh, it, it's just odd. So that's something we could maybe work with. Uh, but um, I, I could support the project with some uh, 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 modifications to the materials. Okay. Thank you. Regarding the color, um, are you on the accent color for the lintels? Are you suggesting that the 
it should be a matte finish rather than a glossy finish? I think so. I mean, w uh, what we have is, is the material board, and, and the sample is very small. It's about an inch by half inch. Oh, I see. And it, it has a very glossy is, kind of a piano. Is that, is that, not, is that because of how it's uh, applied with the tape, or is that no. the, the paint chip? I haven't... Paint chip. Okay. And so... Um, so you'd like that to be a matte finish, yeah, but it, the it, color itself is okay. Matte, it, 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 it's a very dark cherry stain. Oh, I see. Okay. And so we could tone that down with maybe more of a walnut finish. Or maybe oh, I a, see. I see. So not as r dark a finish? Yeah. Okay. Or a dark brown or a dark walnut finish will be fine. It just That's more of a mahogany or cherry wood finish, which would I really see. pop out. Especially if we utilize the, the you know heavier timbers. That color will really pop. Okay, and then are you request? I know a motion hasn't been made yet, but are you suggesting that the trim should not be all around the windows, but that a heavy lint will be provided and a heavy sill, and then or a heavy the jam or a heavy header and and not and a more lighter sill. Okay, and that the that there would not be trim at the jams. I'm not particularly fond of the the okay. jams, but I mean we could discuss that further. Okay. But I Thank think you. It would, because there's so many windows, it would really create these heavy surrounds to it. Right. And I think the idea is to minimize it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Jealous. Thank you. Um, and, and until the neighbors came up and made some comments, um, I, I had a couple small things on it. Um, and after re looking at the pictures in the neighborhood, I. I Understand, I think, where, where he's coming from. It, it is not the same as the house in it, but it certainly appears the design is an improvement over the existing house. Um, I, I am troubled by the square window and the, and the arch window in front, and I, I'll kind of defer back to you two guys. Of, I mean, I, I, I can, that jumped out at me when I looked at it, kind of you know, either two squares or two of you know, two old or... Something could be considered in that, I thought. And there could be operable uh, arched windows as well, especially if they're casements. The casements, that, right. That is a possibility. I'm not sure right. if Marvin, with that integrity line, which is, I believe, what they're recommending, makes that specific one, but Marvin certainly makes a casement wood window. With, a, with an arch top. With yeah. an arch top. Right. Um, I'm, uh, you know, the house is set back. It's not going two stories. Uh, the, the impact of the neighborhood is the front and probably along the driveway area. Um, I'm not, you know, the little bay window pop out doesn't necessarily bother me. I, I agree with uh, Mr. Simonian's comments on the colors and things. Um, and then I think the other thing, the landscaping, I, I would look to ask for a landscape plan. It just, you know, we're out of grass in California. It's time to look at something else. And, it, you know, that should certainly help the front of the property. Um, and I think that was, that were, those are my comments. Okay, thanks. Uh, I just have a few comments. Uh, first, I think I want to I want to commend the owners and the architect in in not going into a two-story uh, format on this one. I think it makes a lot more sense to go, with, especially since you're on the higher side of the street. Going higher is going to impact the neighbors a lot more. Um, in doing so, of course, you you know you're going back. It's a large enough lot. I think um, it's done well. Um, the material board actually shows a color that's a little more beige than it is orange. Than on the rendering, so it's not as bright as, as it looks on the renderings. Um, I think the the tile itself, it's a good choice to go with the two piece, and you know I think we could talk about the colors and pick one that's not maybe as bright. Um, or they could pick one and. Or work they could with work, staff, yeah, yeah, they could work with staff on that. That's Based on their taste and judgment. Uh, the window in the front, uh, I mean, that's I guess it's that's the way they've designed it, and it's just for us to say if if we think it's okay or not. I could go either way on it, but the one, the one thing that kind of is throwing me off is the the entry turret on there. It seems a little a little odd um, for such a modest little you know front entry area. And I wanted to see what your thoughts were on it. Um, I'm not too. I guess I'm I'm okay with the style of it in the neighborhood just because. It is predominantly ranch style going all the way across, but just because it's a little bit different, it's, I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing to have some mix in there. Um, but I think that tower kind of gives it a sort of grander elegance than, than maybe the house. 
I, I was actually going to bring that up to the architect because it, it's it's quite a uh, small rotunda, so it's not it's not large. Right. right? And right. if you look at the door, there's I mean, once you go into it, there's really not that much of an entrance. Right. So I'm not sure if it was just a lot of reiterations of, of collaboration back and forth, and it kind of evolved into this. Right. But it has a pretty big impact on the rendering. Though. It, it's it, pretty it has a large impact on the rendering, but then it's not a very elegant entrance for, right. for the homeowner once you go in. It's not very elegant, you know. It, it, it's somewhat confined. And so that's something where we can maybe bring them up and if, and see if there's another right. solution for it. I mean, even if you took the middle area with sort of a slight shedding, you know, wood, heavy timber mm -hmm. frame out or something for the entry of it, I think it'd be more modest. It'd be a little more in keeping with the, the size of the, the entry. Because, um, I mean, there's really no reason to, to take it this way. I mean, this could be an entrance of its own. Right. A, a more of a grand entrance, and then you have some sort of a trellis above it with some timber or, or right. whatnot. I that think that, that would look very elegant, yeah. So we, we could maybe get his opinion on it, okay. see if that's you know, what he has in mind. One yeah, comment. You see these houses a lot down around the northwest, this kind of style. Right. And up, they always, and on this lot, 67 foot wide, they do the little wings out to the side, the little archway on either side, which really, that's what I was looking at it with, thought it was missing, that, you know, over the driveway. but. Again, you start running into the, oh, the property. The style, sort of across yeah, you know, a little arch across the driveway or something. Uh, or an access to the side yard. Yeah, yeah, you know, so it finishes off, kind of uh, bookends the sides of the house. Right. But, uh, oh, let's bring Franco back okay. up. If you could come up, we'll open it up again, and just state your name and address again, and just talk a little bit about that entry area. Yes, uh, Franco Noravian, 409 West Broadway, Glendale, California, 91204. Uh, Really, the uh, I think when we went from the Mediterranean style to the more of a Spanish colonial style, uh, this was the owner wanted to have something special about the didn't want to have just a double front door with you know wanted something special and so that that was one of the things that uh, he liked about you know uh, generally you see Spanish colonial homes with even small uh, you know because. For let's say for a house that's only 1,800 square feet, that size turret would be appropriate. Mm -hmm. If you consider it's on this the is smaller size, right? Correct. Uh, so and you don't see the rest of the house from the street. So so I, I think it's okay if you want to lower it. Uh, I'd like to try to keep it if it's possible. We can lower it maybe. Um, but I think if we take that away, it becomes a little boring to me that other than the arch window that we have on the living room mm -hmm. without the turret we just have two gables coming out I think it will be too plain but uh, the uh, with the wing walls on the sides we have no problem as far as the setback allows to yeah I don't know if make I it a little bit wider was one of the problems probably would be because like uh, the houses usually go to zero with the property line with the wings. we, we can't do that oh, right I know, you know <laughs> but you do have quite a bit of space yeah. on the driveway side we, we can do yeah. it yeah um, Okay. okay. Uh, is there uh, is there any kind of opinion on the right side as far as taking that rectilinear window to an arch? Would you prefer an uh, arch there? But is, is that yeah, something? that would be no problem. We we can we can do that or or even go as far as taking the arch window and make that a big square window. That that's well, okay. That's great. Too. I, you know the arch yeah. window certainly adds some character. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, maybe the arch window on the bedroom. The, what the reason I didn't do the arch is because if you do an arch, you you have to do a full arch. By the time you do a full arch, that then that window has to come down a little bit to make the proportions work, right. and it's a bedroom. So so you would have a window maybe 18 inches from the floor in a bedroom, which again can, it's okay because we can put some landscaping in front of it, and uh, it will be as far as privacy, it it not that bad, but. That's why I didn't do the arch to begin with. Maybe we could just put something to the effect of you could choose one and then just match it on the other side. Match it on the other side. Oh. If, if I may, um, we looked at these carefully with Franco, and we, we maybe have a little bit of a leg up because we look at these houses every day and evaluate them. And um, we, we noticed that often, especially when there are two street-facing gables to a house like this, 
there's a hierarchy. So one would ha one form would have a large opening, whether it's arched or not, and the other other street-facing gable would have a smaller opening and not have the arch. The arch would be for the special case window. So the way that Franco has designed it is more typical of the ones that we've seen in the 20s. And if I also may make another comment, um, the, the neighbor that came to speak, um, we would like to thank you for, for coming to speak. Uh, and this is uh, the style issue is something that staff um, gets asked a lot about. Um, and uh, we also discuss this issue with Franco because this is a style that is a little bit different for the neighborhood. But because um, because staff generally likes to uh, try to predict what the board will say, and we have an, an understanding that uh, for the most part, to the community, it's the massing rather than the style that makes a project fit in or not fit in. And that's something that comes up all the time, so I just wanted to clarify that. Um, because uh, there's already somewhat of a mixture in the neighborhood, uh, especially staff, and I, I know, I know, you know, we always, of course, defer to the DRB. But staff uh, likes to be very open and allow a homeowner to choose a style that they prefer, as long as they're doing it in a very authentic way. Uh, and that's essentially what what we encourage all our applicants. Uh, whatever style they choose, it should be authentic in its massing and its details. And that's how we uh, we see the DRB evaluating all the projects, and that's what we try to relay to the applicants. Thank you for that. Thank you, Mr. Uh, do we have any other questions? I don't. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Close it back up again. You know, I did not have a problem with the entry okay. uh, from from the beginning. So if if the client uh, oh, is pushing more towards this kind of a rotunda entry mm -hmm. and the architect's okay with it, I personally don't have an issue with it because it's not a really big one. Okay. It's only uh, like a five foot diameter. So it's 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 a petite rotunda is what it is. It's not it's not a big rotunda. yeah it's not a big one. I like the and uh, so it's it's compatible to the size. What I'm trying to say, right. I mean, it's a smaller home with a smaller entry. And uh, in fact, I think the entry is a little too small on the small side. But uh, it's besides the point. As far as the the window is concerned, I, I really don't have a preference mm -hmm. one way or another. But yeah, the roof material. Um, uh, the window surrounds and the colors and so forth, I, I do have some concerns with. Okay. Um, did you have any questions? I guess how no, the I'm, on the windows? You know, I, um, actually, I, I kind of wanted to comment a little bit on Ms. Reich's comment here because I look at projects that come in that are modern, this metal and glass and steel fitting into neighborhoods. And I think you're right. It, it is a massing issue, much so that at least I've heard from board, uh, you know, neighbors and things, and people have come here. Um, I kind of like the Spanish style architecture. So the fact that they are trying to be authentic, and and staff is following up on that. I mean, I, you know, it's going to look different. I think it's an improvement on what's in the neighborhood at the moment, or at least in that particular lot. And uh, um, yeah, I think it'll fit in. I. I the square window, I don't know. Um, I kind of have seen it, but I like the arched window, so maybe uh, I would say definitely don't put two rectilinear windows. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah. 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 So the, the arch on the left side yeah. certainly adds a lot of character to it. Right. Usually they're even bigger than the one that's depicted. It's more of a grand window. Right? And they do I sort of reflect the, the use that's behind there. So I mean, Well, is it maybe then that the rectilinear window is a little too big? As we were saying this, that, that maybe that would help with the proportion a little bit if it got a little smaller? I mean, I, uh, I just I don't have that much of a problem with it. Okay. I just don't. Do you want to make a motion, yeah, Mr. Simone? Are, uh, are you ready to? Sure. Um, I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the project uh, with the uh, conditions as stated, and perhaps staff wants to reiterate them very quickly. And I'll ask, if I may, if you can go over the one regarding the roof material, okay. unless Stephanie wrote it down because I didn't get that one. 
the architect has uh, recommended the Bermuda blend. Okay. And uh, I guess a condition would be to staff to work with the architect to try to come up with a different color because it's so bright. It's the color, not the profile, that you're concerned right. with. Right, right. The, the tile is the right tile. It's right. the color. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Um, I guess there's, there's probably a few more conditions. Yes. Yes, and I'll go over them. Okay, so basically it's to work with staff to propose a different color for the roof tile, basically less bright, something more matte. Well, there, there are about 15 choices here they could work with. I also have down to consider using a darker matte finish versus a glossy finish for, I believe it was the accents of the, is it the lentils, was it? Yeah. Not the stucco so, color. So, so the, uh, the architect acknowledged that he was going to use a heavier timber as the header and then a lighter wood sill and then the color to be more of a typical dark walnut finish. Right, More of a brown, brown mahogany. finish rather than a reddish right. hue. Right, right, which is more in keeping with the... With the that, that's one item actually for the, the color itself. And then the other comment that I had was to consider minimizing the window surround. Again, as you mentioned, using a heavy timber for the, he for the header and then a lighter uh, for, the, for the sill. Correct. Okay. I just kind of separated and them. Yeah, and to eliminate the jams. Correct. Oh, eliminate the jams. The jam surrounds. And, and these are conditions. So conditions. Right. Okay. So they're not considerations. Right. Okay. The next one was to add a chimney cap, submit a landscape plan showing all proposed changes, restudy the bay window to be more in keeping with the design. Um, I don't know if we want to make that a condition. Yeah. You can make that a consideration. Consider? Is that, wait, is that the bay window or the front window? No, it was the bay window, oh, the bay window. Uh, so on the one. driveway side. On the kitchen one. Right? That one, the existing one. No. We can make it a consideration. I mean, I was the one that brought it up. Right. So if consideration? Yeah, consideration to do something with it, because it just looks odd with that little roof on top of it. It's just going to look very weird. Okay, and lastly, well, there was some discussion about the arched window should I just eliminate that altogether regarding the window on the front right side? There were some options, I'm but it's... I'm, I'm not going to make them crazy. I mean, I would say maybe consider as a consideration to, uh, to re restudy it. <laughs> they may come up with a better idea. Um, okay, so consider restudying the front right side window. And before you complete your thing. I, the, the permeable pavement of the driveway, if it was not a brand new concrete driveway, I would I would say a consideration, but not a condition. Right. I, I can't see them. I agree. Well, we said driveway. consideration on the other one, too. So as, so. as well, yeah. But there were a couple that were conditions, though. So everything was a condition except for the permeable driveway and was a consideration. Number two consideration was the bay window, bay window. study. Okay. Not the bay window, the, the front window. Right. The front arch on the left side and the rectilinear window on the right side, restudy re that as a consideration. Yes. Is, is there a, um, did I miss a consideration or a condition regarding that bay window, Mr. Simonian? You mentioned something. Consideration, I thought you were. Yeah, I said you just. Consideration. Just to consider restudying the window on the front right side, and it, it was basically just. The Pretty one. general. There was that this. was. I think we're also talking about the bay window, bay window. driveway. Right, that one too. That was a consideration right. to restudy the bay window on the driveway side to be more in keeping with the house. It's what I've noted. Now, regarding the permeable driveway, is that a consideration instead of a condition? Consideration. Yes. Okay. Do we want to keep the other? three conditions noted in the staff report regarding the trash enclosure, yes. mechanical equipment, mm -hmm. and again, to I, it's understood that he's using a two-piece two barrel clay roof tile. Do we still want to keep it as a condition? I, yeah, I, I mean, I... Just to make sure that... Well, he's already agreed to it, so I guess it's not... It. Would it be redundant to keep it, or...? Oh, I see what you're saying. So That's it, my it's a moot point, yeah. basically. But the, the trash and the HVAC is something that you could keep as a condition, and the S tiles have already been sorted out by the brochure. Yeah. Okay, then I'll just uh, not include the one about the roof tile. Okay. And that was a motion by Board Member Simonian. I'll second. And a second by Board Member Ellis, and that would be approved with conditions. 
Board Member Simonian? Yes. Board Member Ellis? Yes. Chairperson Yu? Yes. Motion carries 3-0. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That brings us to our third case, 1-PDR 2008-089-A, 2064 Buckingham Place. Yes. And there she is. She really does. <laughs> yeah. Finally, you're going to give somebody else a chance to stand up here, right? Milka needs a break tonight, then. So. Very good job. Thank you. As was just mentioned, the next and final case on tonight's agenda is case number 1-PDR 2008-089A. This was for a project located at 206 for Buckingham Place. Um, the applicant is proposing to add 263 square feet to the rear of an existing one-story, approximately 2,000 square foot house, and to construct a new approximately 1,800 square foot second story for a total of 4,097 square feet of habitable area. Currently, the house, like I mentioned, is one story structure. It would become two. There is an existing two car garage. The applicant is also proposing to add an additional single car garage to fulfill the three car garage requirement for homes greater than 3,500 square feet. The existing pool will remain as proposed and the overall architectural style of the home is going to change from a simple ranch style home to a modern contemporary one. You'll notice um, here in a site plan, the project site is rather unique in the fact that it is a flag lot. It has access off of Buckingham Place and then it proceeds to a flat building pad at the top of the lot and then there's a steep slope downward down towards Chevy Chase. So the existing home is tucked into the basically the northeast corner of the lot on the flat on the flat building pad. The what we what we're going to consider it would be the south elevation which we're going to consider the front elevation because that would be the elevation that you see as you walk up the flag lot. That's the elevation that has the front entryway that will have the three car garage and then the north and the north elevation would be the location of the existing um, forgive me the location of the new bedroom on the ground floor and then obviously the second story will be tucked back ahead the project is exempt from CEQA it complies with all the zoning regulations for construction in the R1R restricted residential zone all of the properties surrounding it are zoned R1R and they feature single family homes. Um, if you'd like, I can go into the details for the neighborhood comparison or go directly on to the staff report analysis. It's up to the board. To the staff, staff report of part analysis. <coughs> okay. Uh, the staff report, as you're aware, was broken down into three sections, site planning, uh, scale and massing, and architectural details. The first of that is site planning. Essentially, the project is going to maintain the general site planning as, it, as you see today with the, with the exception of the additional, again, this is noted here, which would be, um, this would be the existing floor plan. This would be the proposed floor plan with the addition of the approximately 250 square foot additional bedroom to the rear and the one car garage that's going to be extending into the front setback. The lot coverage is consistent. The parking will be provided per code for a three-car garage. Um, landscaping is to remain as is. Now, in terms of privacy, there is an existing two-story home directly to the east, uh, located off of Buckingham Place. The project itself, and you'll notice here on the westerly elevation, was designed to be sensitive to the adjacent home. There are no windows out of bedrooms. There is an existing window proposed, or well not existing, but a window that's being kept that's going to essentially uh, face or front the side neighbor. The windows that are depicted here are clear story windows of a two-story high living space, so nothing will be visible. This is also uh, from the window that you see here off of it is from a closet. So 
specifically the designer made sure not to have any habitable rooms overlook into the side neighbor's yard. Also, we'd like to point out that, as the board is well aware, there are no hillside view protection ordinances here in the city of Glendale. So the, the designer made every effort to try to ensure privacy for the adjacent. And again, as a second story addition, unfortunately, it will somewhat um, impact the adjacent neighbor's view down towards Chevy Chase, but there is no view protection ordinance in the city of Glendale. Um, going to mass and scale, the existing one, it's a one-story structure. It's approximately 2,000 square feet. They're almost doubling the square footage of the home. But the various factors go into the mass and scale of the project. One would be the, um, the massing. If you'll notice here in both the site plan and in the elevations, the existing two-car garage and the new proposed one-car garage is going to have that one-story massing effect facing the flag lot. They are propo proposing to have the two-story addition sort of towards the what would be considered the rear or the north elevation. You'll notice here also in the photographs, because it is a flag lot, the building itself is sort of tucked away in that northeast corner of the lot. Here is the existing neighbor's two-story home. There's great foliage. There's a huge pine tree and really mature landscaping that essentially blocks the existing one-story home. And if you'll notice here in the photographs, there are story poles as required for proposed second-story additions in the R1R zone, but those story poles are barely visible. So in terms of the massing, it's not going to have a great street, for, you know, street presence on Buckingham Place. Uh, what are the two lower pictures representing? Right oh, the two lower pictures. Thank you. The, the ones up above are obviously from Buckingham Place in the flag lot. The two lower photographs are photographs taken from Chevy, Chevy Chase. Chase. Chevy Chase. And you'll yes. notice that Chevy Chase, if you were to drive there, drive past, and it's on a corner lot, it, you'll notice. Oh, forgive me, because I think actually it's on the, the yes, on. you'll notice here. On the vicinity map, here you'll have Buckingham Place, the flag lot leading to the flat, flat building pad. And then down below, Chevy Chase in this area has a hairpin curve. curve. So there are no sidewalks. There is no pedestrian traffic. When you're going around that hairpin curve on Chevy Chase, you basically don't have time to look up. So there was the impression that staff felt that the two-story massing would not be looming over the properties down below along Chevy Chase because of the way that it's somewhat set into this type of little ridge valley. You have that hairpin curve and then you have the property set way up on top on the building pad. So you would essentially have to get out of your car, strain a look up in order to see the, the second story massing from Chevy Chase. So again, and also the heights, I just would like to mention uh, the height itself. Currently the one story structure is 16 feet in height. They are proposing an overall height of 25 feet and a few, give or take a few inches. It's very consistent with a two-story home. In the R1R zone, they would be allowed to go up to 35 feet uh, with a pitched roof, so they're well below the maximum height limit for a two-story structure. Uh, last but not least, building design and detailing. From the photographs you see before you, it's a simple one-story gable-ended home, you'll notice that they have this angled front entryway that was added at a later date. That front entryway is incorporated somewhat in a new design in this new modern version. The property owner specifically wanted a modern contemporary style home. They have such provided um, both in terms of the materials and also the design details. Now. The home itself, and as I've already mentioned, there's less detail on the westerly facade facing the adjacent two-story home. M most of the detail is actually on the facade, which would be the east elevation, facing not only Chevy Chase, but also having the views. They have this frame structure that, actually, that sort of buffers 
There are, uh, there's a two-story balcony, and down below the balcony, you'll notice here on the site plan, there is a veranda in order to go ahead and utilize outdoor space for whether it's gathering or dining or whatnot. The building also has that stepped, staggered portion with the one-car garage. It steps up. You have that central frame. You'll have this bay window that also breaks up the elevation, and then sort of the two-story sort of setback portion in addition to the rear. Um, again, that provides great detailing all along the east elevation. The majority of the front elevation facing the flag lot, it has a three-car garage, and then that front angled entryway as well. There are different fenestration patterns. There's, you'll notice some longer rectangular windows. You'll have the more horizontal clear story windows and a few of the bay windows as well. The fenestration pattern is somewhat, you'll notice that similar windows are repeated on all of the elevations. So even though there's a variety of windows, there is a cohesive quality about all of the various elevations themselves. Um, bring to the attention rounded shapes. You'll notice a rounded shape on the east elevation is also reflected on the west elevation. So there, it is, there is a consistent design motif. As well as there's, you'll notice what is considered projecting vertical sunshades also that are repeated on various elevations that are consistent. Um, last but not least, the home in terms of ma the materials themselves features aluminum windows with uh, baked on enamel finish. It'll be a moss green color. There is an architectural glass that is used for the balcony railings that's also going to be used on the garage doors. There's going to be smooth stucco finish and the flat roofs. So all of these architectural details are very typical for modern style homes, which would be the flat roofs, the clean lines, the emphasis on glass, the metal railing, aluminum windows, and there is obviously an authenticity to, to the details and the architectural style. With that said, uh, staff recommends approval of the project. If you'd like, I can read off the summaries for the site planning, mass and scale, and building design or just conclude my report and be available to answer any questions you might have. Where does the metal roof occur? Over the entry? Yeah, I think yes. that's the only place where mm -hmm. it would be this place. one right here. I see. That would be the metal roof. Okay, we've Last but not least, we received two letters, <coughs> both of which are on the dais for your review. One letter is from Mr. Gregory Majarian. He included photographs. He is the property owner to the west in the two-story home, and he included uh, simulated photos showing what the mass and scale would do to his view and other various other concerns if you'd like to read a letter. And I believe Mr. M Mr. Majorian is in the audience as well, so I'm sure he'll verbally address the board. And there was also an email that was sent by Mr. Greg Guzik as well that was included as part of the packet. That said, do we have any questions for staff? No. Oh, oh great no, presentation. Do you have any discussion on trash enclosures? What they're trash enclosures? No, but we can definitely double check. And and they do have a three-car garage, and I'm sure they have room to place them. Uh, so that's a new new block wall, right? That will be a new new six-foot-high block oh, okay, wall. Right. Okay. Yeah, because now they're just kind of parked in the landscape yeah. and mm -hmm. something to address. Okay. Anything else? Thank you. Okay, we have, we have two cards for this project, and neither are for the applicant or owner, so I guess oh. you guys are okay with not speaking? <laughs> the they okay. said that they would be available to answer any okay, questions. Okay, so if we have any questions, then we'll bring some. Okay. Who was the designer? Do you know? Yes. The, oh, I, I apologize. The, actually, the applicant is Mr. Albert uh -huh. Zargarian. He is sitting in the audience. And we had several meetings. So the, what you see before you on the board is a culmination of 
quite a bit of back and forth dialogue, but he was a pleasure to work with. Okay. Very experienced architect, so. Very good. Okay, so the first card is uh, Gregory Majerian. If you could come up and state your name and address for the record. Uh, Gregory Majerian, 2060 Buckingham Place, uh, Glendale, California, 91206. Neighbor to the east. my west. If you could speak into the mic, please. Sure. Can we record it? Sorry. Um, yes, I did send a letter, actually emailed and um, attached some photographs to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, um, just for the record, there is nothing wrong going on. We're good neighbors, and uh, there is no war going on. We're okay. exchanging <laughs> Christmas gifts and uh, uh, watching over each other's uh, houses when on vacation. My problem is, um, of course, there is no view prob- uh, no view um, um, restrictions or whatever it is in Glendale. I understand that clearly. Um, I have three windows, three rooms actually looking over to the property. One is going to be completely blocked. It's on the photo. The, the other room will be about 80% completely blocked. I mean, there is no, um, there is no sky will be seen from that room. I invited architects to come and see, usually they do that, but uh, Albert um, decided not to. So um, that's why I I submitted those photos. And I brought them uh, again. um, If I may put it just to give them... if, if you provide the photos to the board, they will have to become part of the file. Yes. 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 They are all yours. They are all yours. That's from one room. Yes. These are photos that have already been submitted as part of the file. So they're, they're just a the color just version. Color. So you can, you can see um, those are poles, existing poles. So okay. nothing will be seen from this room. The other bedroom, 80%. So. What's the distance? Uh, between houses, yeah. uh, about 22, 24 feet. Mm-hmm. There, there's enough. Uh, there's enough. There's enough. There's enough. There's enough. Not enough, but. Uh, I didn't see that one. That's a different picture than yeah. that. And uh, that's a view from my bedroom. Okay, you can leave these here and then okay. we could. Because right. I got the podium. There's this way. Speech. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, we live in this neighborhood since. 1998. Um, typical houses are about 2,400 square foot in this area. This house goes to 4,000. Um, it's a little bit over than uh, existing neighbor. Um, even though project is beautiful, I like the project. Um, so my objections are um, windows are closed. We're not going to see sun, absolutely. No light, no sky, no moon. That's objection. Um, this kind of um, mansion will be next to my house, which will bring the value of my house down significantly, sig- uh, very much. Um, that's kind of a humiliating house uh, next to me. This is my main objection, too. That's a financial issue there. And um, Sorry, but your time is up. If you could just I'm sorry. your okay. thoughts. Um, th- those are my main objections. And uh, I have a problem with the architect who never, um, who, who said, but he never came to discuss this with us. We, he was invited to discuss. Um, um, there's nothing wrong if uh, this house could be a little bit smaller, 3,000, whatever. Uh, it's not my, uh, I'm not an architect. I can do suggestions. But I'm, I'm, what I'm asking them to yield, to shift it a little bit and not to block my windows. Um, and that, um, um, I have nothing to add. Just uh, don't block me. Don't block me. Don't bring my value down. I have very strong objections about this. And please consider. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Second card is Nereen Marzarian. If you could also state your name and address for the record. <coughs> Noreen Mirzoyan, 2060 Buckingham Place, the 
same spot, Glendale, California. So, <clears throat> uh, I just, I am very emotional about building this kind of mansion next, next to my house. Not uh, uh, major objections is because my house is built in such a way that doesn't have any windows on any other side but, uh, but from the western side. And if, if, the store, if the house will be elevated to, to the second story, all my windows in a, all two bedrooms on the second floor will be blocked. No sunlight, direct sunlight or indirect, will, will, will visit these windows. This is health issue that, I mean, it is known from an architectural stand of point, you, you, you should know that if the room doesn't, hasn't been visited by sun for, for, for some time during the day, that's um, psychological depressing and that's also um, uh, sun makes its uh, uh, ultraviolet protection against bacteria and all kinds of things that it, it's known to be necessary for the dwelling. Um, my second uh, living, living room will ha has also the window to the same side and will be have, will have completely blocked, will be blocked from the, from the sun. But I will, I will expect to live in a house with no sunlight at all, with all this concern. If you will look at the, at the design of the, all the houses in a cul-de-sac, it been, been designed a few, maybe 20 or how many years ago, uh, they were uh, built in a balance and harmony in order so everybody could endure the privacy and enough openness and, and sun. Uh, some of them houses, they have view, nice canyon view, the other ones has nice mountain view. And this makes everybody really feel comfortable. These are, these are not small houses in 2000, a little bit more. Uh, most, of, most of us is enjoying four bedrooms, some of them on in extent of five or so. But um, if you will look at the design of the old neighborhood, if the house is on a second, has second floor, it's not full second floor, it's just one room or, or two, and they don't block anybody's, uh, don't uh, penetrate in somebody's private, private life in their backyard. Uh, they don't block anybody's sun. And uh, if you will look at my house and the neighbor's house, they are levered to, to only one story with four bedrooms on one floor in order to allow us to get the light that we need to need. It's just necessity. I consider that this construction, when, when somebody refers to 4,000 some uh, square foot of habitat area, it is just a habitat. But if you will look at the mass of the house, it's triple size of the current existing house. And that's excessive. I mean, for one, uh, one family living, uh, oh my God, 4,500, I don't know. If, it's, if the, you have some that space, that's fine. If you do it at the expense of neighbors and blocking them, and I will sit in the misery and live in a, in a shadow of this mansion, uh, the shadow will cover all my backyard, including the If you could wrap up, please, we have so time I, is up. I mean, that's, uh, when somebody mentioned on the page three, I will look at the pro uh, proposed uh, design review. There's a page three of six, which says privacy part, and refers to some kind of landscaping and nature, nature trees that, that kind of separate us from them. It's not on the side, it's in the front yard. Yeah, we, are, we, have separate, we don't see each other on the front side of the house. It's just not from the... Okay. It's completely ignored. If you could wrap up, please. Yeah, I do. And we have a question from... Um, not really a question. Thank you. Do you mind if I... Do you mind if I come sure. up to... Sure. Actually, I, I had some questions for her, but I oh, guess... okay. You can go first. No, please, go ahead. If she could come back up, I just had... Oh, okay. Um, just to verify, this is this is the house. Is this your... This one. That's the house, right? And it, it's two stories right now. If you could go That's back, correct. I'm sorry. It's being recorded, so... Okay, so it's two stories on that side of the... That's correct. It's okay. two-story house. What would you approximate the height of the, the ridge, the top ridge? Uh? I don't know. I can't tell you. It's... Uh, the, the the rooms are about eight feet high, so we can say so eight, two times eight feet plus, plus, plus one, uh, plus seventeen, plus five. Maybe. It looks like it's about a foot and a half, eighteen, nineteen, uh, twenty-two, twenty-three, maybe. Mm -hmm. to that's what calculation okay. brings us to. Uh, that, that's all the questions I had. Thank uh, you. I, I have a question for you, sir. Um, <coughs> the color pictures that you've provided us, uh, they're taken from 
from, from, from different the, bedrooms from your house from three different bedrooms and and so the one over here seems to be closer to the street street there's no street well That's closer to Buckingham to the cul-de-sac yeah. to the cul-de-sac no it's overlooking the house which is cul-de-sac would be on that left hand side from from the this is the view cul-de-sac is here got it and and so it's closer to the street whereas and this is farther this is in the, the rear hillside. right that's what i mean so you have one in this is at the rear of your house that's this, correct correct and this is more in the front of your house no the side the other side that's the western side of my house the other side that, that's the western side that's uh, and this is the eastern side no 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 i do don't have any I, windows on the eastern side the no board? please do okay. yes <laughs> actually when mr Majarian sent in his emails. I mean, obviously we take such concerns to heart. And so when we were taking a look, this particular, forgive me, I'm going to use the Here. pointer actually instead. Uh, here you go. He's there. Hey. He's hiding. Thank you. Okay. But I'm going to come here because I can't see. That's it. fine. <laughs> okay, this, this is the cul-de-sac for Buckingham Place. Yes. This is the flag lot. This is the home the westerly or the easterly side and this building outline is Mr. Majarian's two-story home so as you noticed here you had several two-story windows up top so when staff you know heard his concern and we went out there to verify also with Stephanie um, you know, if you face this particular direction straight out towards the west, you have the two-story building envelope at this particular location. So, what I should say is, however, this particular portion is still going to be maintained at one story. So when they look out these windows, and again, the house is set back six feet, and then you have about an additional 20-foot setback for the adjacent property owner. So when you're looking out these two-story windows, you still have this existing, what's gonna be, it's still an existing two-car garage. They're not building above the two-car garage. They are pulling back the two-story structure so that these windows can still look down that canyon way. I have a Google, 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 so, map, Google Earth map here. That's, and that's why we if were concerned. That will be helpful. Well, we'll take that into the application. Thank that's, you. Uh, my house and this is the house. Uh, right. Well, I think it's just showing the same condition that she just went over. So. I'm sorry, we can't have you commenting from over there. Sorry. So, I see that, Mr. Yu. So I just wanted, you know, we wanted to make sure that the concerns were addressed because, yes, there are story poles right now. And if you were to run the story pole over, and you were to take the photograph in this direction, right. you know, you would see the story poles. But in terms of the actual massing of the two-story addition, it is pulled back to towards the back of the build, towards the back, away from the existing two-car garage that's one story. They're going to maintain this as a one-story structure. You'll notice here, this is the one story looking down. Uh, and this is the elevation where you would look over this one-story structure down the canyon. This view yes. uh, is looking from the rear. This would be looking from the rear. So their view in this direction would definitely be impacted by a two-story structure. And that's structure. what that, that point of view is? Correct. Is, like you said, going from that towards yeah. the pool? This view, and again, we, we did not go on Mr. Majorian's Wait, side. That's what you think And this is, is a picture. This is the first time that I'm seeing this particular one, even though there are other ones. If you were to go ahead, and obviously as shown in the photographs, you would see the story poles and the two-story addition in that direction. I see. And again, the canyon is somewhat in, in this particular. And, but and the window that this is taken from is probably this window. It would be that window right Whereas here. Whereas in if you take kind of do a 90-degree turn looking out of the window, you would then look towards? Towards this the, direction. Correct. What about this one? That particular window, and again, perhaps Mr. Majarian, if he doesn't mind, if you don't mind allowing him to come up, he can tell you which right. windows are yeah, perhaps. I'd be interested to see which where this this view. And is. he might eliminate. Um, you want to come, come around? around. We have mics up here. On a, on a Google Earth map. Uh, right here. Clearer picture. Thank you. Um, I'll just show. Uh, I'll show here. Window one. If you could talk into that. Window one. two. Um, back up. Step back. Uh, where? Just right against above the wall. Okay. Right above. As long as you. 
This one. Okay. Speak loudly. Oh, maybe I'll just... Okay, I'll hear you up there. Can you see from here if I... Yeah. It's easier if, for if me If you'll ex excuse me... Window okay. one, uh, room one, bedroom one, bedroom two, master bedroom. Okay. So... I have no any other windows looking to any other places. Guy, okay, and in so this window, this is only what I'm going to see on the A property. So on the, the question, walls. sir, the question I'm was, where this. is this window yeah. looking Here. from? I'm looking into okay, this yeah. and looking but into this and from this angle. Which Here. window is oh, that? Oh, this one, one is. Let me help you out for I'm one sorry. second. I'm sorry. Just let me help you out here. Yeah. Okay. And so, basically, what you're saying, this is your home, right? Right. And 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 here is are your bedrooms, right? One. Two and master. Got it. Right. The master is over here. My master is there. And the rear wind does the master have a window looking towards your pool and one towards uh, your house? It's it's looking towards the hillside. Towards hillside. The pool. There. Is there any windows from the master bedroom? There's looking, only one. Just one looking towards the pool on the hillside. It, but I can see this property because it's being extended here. Got it. And then, then you have two other bedrooms here. That's correct. One is the middle one, which is this picture. Right. And, and then one the, is in the front. Right, which is, I say, 80%. Uh -huh. This is 100%, this is 80%. And, and the one in the front is this one? Right. Okay. And so this, this is view from the master bedroom. If I look that way. Right. If I look this way. That's room from this second bedroom. Let me just mark them. Two. One. And master M. So two. Does that answer your question, bro? Yeah, I think so. Two. Okay. Master that's all you want. Thank you, okay. sir. I think you've answered the question. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. If, if I may. Yes. Yeah. That's um, right. Uh, Staff always appreciates hearing from the community, um, and we take those matters very seriously. Uh, we wanted to mention that uh, over the course of the past couple of years, City Council has been reviewing uh, with the culmination of the DRB ordinance that was passed in the spring of 2008, the City Council considered uh, view protection in a series of meetings and made the determination that no residence, homeowner, business owner is really ever guaranteed their view out of a particular window. So that is not part of the ordinance for you to consider. It's always important to us when, uh, when neighbors, residents come to these meetings to understand their concerns and see if there's a way to address their concerns, but it is not incumbent upon the applicant to make certain that any view out of any adjacent window will be will not be impacted, because that is uh, that was a matter that the city council deliberated on in a number of meetings and firmly decided not to include in the ordinance. What is included in the ordinance for your consideration and has been considered here very thoughtfully in the new design is any Im potential impact on privacy. And as you know, that is determined as looking out of rooms that are uh, considered um, more uh, more family rooms, living rooms, um, not bedrooms, not bathrooms, uh, but balconies are also included in that. Um, in this particular case, we've got small bedroom windows that look over to the neighbor's property. Oh, there are no bedroom windows. Those are very big windows, I and mean, I'm going to see 100%. Excuse, excuse sorry, me, sir. sir. I'm sorry, it's not. We I can't go back and forth on this. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Is the public hearing it's, closed? We haven't no. closed it. I thought you were. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. We could close it now. Um, if you could um, please take your seat. We'll have you back up if we have any other questions. Thank so you. So, in any case, we um, we did uh, consider that. The excuse, forgive me. There is the um, that uh, large window that uh, you couldn't actually see out of that allows light into the entry stair. Um, that's the uh, window that appears as a long horizontal window 
on the, yes, east elevation. Um, and because there's no way to actually see out of that window, um, staff studied that consideration as it is part of the code, and there, um, we determined that there will be no impact on any neighbor's privacy. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So let's discuss. Time for discussion? <laughs> Time for discussion. You want to close it? We have no more cards. Uh, yeah, we've already closed it. So. Oh, did you? I'm sorry. Did you go first last time around? No, it's my turn to go you first. Go? <laughs> it's kind of Boy, you know, it's interesting. I went out and looked at the site, and I thought, wow, a flag lot. You can't see it from the street. This one will be easy. Um, looked at the plans. I thought it's a very nicely designed house. Um, I thought it was a little big for the lot, to be honest with you. I mean, you know, compared to the rest of the neighborhood. Um, the only neighbor who has any impact is here. And, and so, uh, and... Boy, it's pretty obvious, I mean, especially how they're describing their house. I, I could see this house getting smaller, and, and maybe with a little bit, uh, that discussion, you know, what, the one thing I'm missing in the plans was, which we've seen numbers of times when there's an issue like this, the architect will show the, the floor plan, or, you know, the slice that shows where that other house is and how does it relate. And I guess from, you know, the, the neighbor, uh, we haven't heard from the applicant, but the neighbor commented that there wasn't any communication. I don't see any help for me for this in the plans. Um, before I get into you know other little details or things, I'd kind of like to hear what my colleagues say. But it, it's on the big side. I, I'm having a little problem with it on the big side, and especially now with the neighbor having an issue with it. Um, it it's you know design-wise, I think they've done a nice job. It's a it's a kind of a great-looking house, but. Uh, Maybe trying to shoehorn a little too much on this one flat pad, small pad on the top of the lot. Okay, thank you. Mr. Samori? I'd like to have the designer come up and ask him a question, if I may. All right, let me open it up. If the designer could come up. Oh. Actually, or somebody yeah. from the applicant side. I just, my, my question is, is I think as a re oh, if you could state your name and address. If you don't mind stating your name and your address first, and well, then... Well, may, maybe even staff can answer my question. Okay. What, what, what I'm trying to uh, just understand is, <laughs> is we have this survey over here that's done, and then which illustrates the next-door neighbor. Mm -hmm. And then there's this cut line that kind of goes right up along the property line, and it's like a cut section there. Is that the actual p location of the home next door, as far as you know? I'm going to look at... It, it's not a survey. I don't believe so. It's not a, it's not a survey. No. It's probably taken from it's a survey a because it has uh, characteristics um, of what you I would see. I see the cut line that you're referring to. And I'm wondering, is that the location of the home next door? Where it's slanted away from this house and, and the location of Yeah. The um, if you're referring to yes. uh, that, that um, when, uh, when Ms. Zimatidis and I went out to the site, uh, we observed that, in our view, that appeared to be accurately locating the neighbor's house. That that's the plan profile of the neighbor's house For, at an angle. But that was that my only question. Is. Yeah, okay. because uh, that that's relevant to my consideration. I just wanted to verify that. Thank you. Thank you. That was an easy question. That was an easy question. We um, solved that. So, would you, would you yeah, like us to put an aerial? Would that, that help? That would be very helpful. That would be very helpful. There also, there was no existing west elevation in there, right? I got an east and a, a north. I mean, and I didn't see one up here. And it also looks like the second story kind of starts from here back. <laughs> on, the, on the existing plans? Yeah, um, yeah they yeah. gave me a, a north and an east. Right. The, the you sides. know, we generally don't require yeah, the okay. existing house to be drawn at all, so we okay. thought that was just a bonus. That was a bonus. <laughs> How long does it usually take for it to boot up? Should I wait or should I? Well, it's going to boot up in just probably less than a minute. Okay. And we'll wait. Well, I think that's the only one that we have that we can see coming over there. Because the orientation and the site plan of the house next door. It looks accurate from there. 
That's right, and, and so the existing home to the right is angled away, which certainly right. Helps. That one's going that way, and it's and it's offset, whereas and it's closer to the cul-de-sac than the subject property. Right, and that's what I wanted to verify. Well, look there at you go. This is pretty good at that. Is that is that what you would like to see? And if you'd like, I can put that on large screen. Is there a way to look at it from more of a bird's eye view? Unfortunately, not from a no. bird's eye view. These are all um, aerial photographs that were taken off of a, you know, from can a helicopter, and so there's. Yes, I can go ahead and do that. Look at it from the other side. And see what, you can see that corner when it comes in. Whoop. And you're referring to this particular. Okay. Yeah, that one's good. Right. Oops. So it looks accurate. But you can go scan at that. Okay, that's perfect. Would you like to keep it on this yeah. particular? Yeah, if we could keep it oh, on this. Can you make it the bigger, the full screen? I can make it on full screen, yes. It's so demanding. I know. If you can't touch it or get to no, it. No, I, I, I can grab a little marker and start writing on it like that. But. Uh, this is very relevant to me, uh, for me, as far as my, my uh, comments are concerned. Uh, what this view depicts is, is the fact that the home to the right, the neighbor's home, is, is offset, and it actually is angled so it sits farther away from the property line as you go deeper into it. Secondly, it's closer to the street, so your home is closer to the street than the existing home. Uh, that's important for, for the following reasons. City Council, of course, has made a few determinations, and, and a lot of discussions have taken place about privacy and view, and Ms. Reich uh, stated it uh, very quickly, so I'm not going to reiterate the facts. Uh, what is uh, uh, in our power and preview is to actually make sure that uh, homes are, are, are designed uh, in such a way where if a second floor is added onto um, it's added onto in a location that's um, least compromising from a neighbor's point of view. And in other words, if, if someone could have an opportunity to add the second floor away from the neighbor's property, it's always nice to add the second floor away from a neighbor's property as opposed to right next to the neighbor's property. Uh, we're uh, many times uh, forced into a situation where we're assessing a house where they were built identical uh, in an identical track in an identical period of time, very similar floor plans, and so they're next to one another. And so, therefore, if you add a second story, you're going to impact it very much so. Uh, you're going to impact the neighborly home uh, 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 quite massively. In this scenario, it, it, it's quite different. And and it's different because this, this house, which is the neighborly home, is angled away and, and, and as opposed to being exactly here. So if this home were to be placed exactly here, then when you're adding on this portion, you're really significantly impacting this. And so I don't uh, believe that the second floor addition is, is in the wrong location. And the reason why is it's stepped back and it steps back onto the site as opposed to right here. So if it was added onto right here, I would say, well, it's at the wrong location, but it isn't. It's, it's occurring in this area, which allows the home here uh, views or sunlight, as you might put it. Um, it's, it. It's really not in our jurisdiction. It's not in our power to prevent one landowner um, from not adding onto their second floor because it's their right. You have a two-story home, and so for years you've been looking onto their backyard, and 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 that was done a long time ago. So, um, besides getting into those kind of discussions, um, we simply look at it as: could this addition occur in a different part of this home where it presents less of an impact? And in my opinion. Uh, the answer is no. Now, uh, whether it's too big or too small, it's, it's another discussion. But 
my, my opinion is that the addition has occurred in the right location. As far as uh, this neighborhood is concerned, uh, uh, I have a home in this area, uh, in the Chevy Chase area, and it's, it's a very vocal community. It's, it's a community that really protects its hillsides, and, and if there's usually a design that, that uh, infringes upon um, that hillside, there's usually a lot of people that come out, and I mean a lot of people. And so we really haven't had that kind of a show up today. There's been one neighbor, which is the concerned neighbor for, for, for obvious reasons. And so therefore, um, I'm going to put the massing aside and then concentrate on the, on, on the style of, of the home. It's a very unique contemporary home. It's kind of a uh, contemporary design that we certainly don't see every day. Uh, it has... Uh, uh, segments of the original home that's, that's presented there, but it's so wildly different. Uh, one can't really, or I can't really judge the style of it because it's contemporary, it's so unique, so it's hard to say whether it's the right style or it isn't the right style. It, it's, it's very unique, so you can't then judge that, and the way I look at it is, does it make sense? Does the massing make sense? Do the window locations make sense? Do the material selection make sense? And, and the answer is, is yes. And so therefore, I support this project. Um, there is certainly a lot of discussions we could have about the details of it. But again, those are uh, uh, more uh, subjective to taste, as one might say, as, as opposed to uh, design and guidelines. So as far as the guidelines are concerned, it's masked correctly, it's located properly, uh, it's, it's not infringing on the neighbor's home, and I think it works quite nicely on, on the site. Uh, it's a very unique property in that you can't really see it from the street, as staff has indicated. You could barely see it from Chevy Chase, and um, this is... Uh, a style that obviously the architect has worked hard for and, and, and it's one that the client prefers. And so I think I could support this project um, as presented. Thank you. Uh, let's see. I, I too concur with Mr. Simonian in in that in all the discussions that we've had regarding view protection and those kinds of issues I think that the addition has taken into account um, the fact that the house is, the neighboring house actually does turn away. There's enough space between the houses, um, and the views are retained in a sense for that area on the left portion of it by keeping it a single story. The, excuse me. Excuse me, we can't. Because <laughs> um, I think that we, we, we have to... They have the same right to go two stories as the house next to it has had for how many years that we, that's been there. And so I think to look at, like you said, we can go now and to look into more of the style of it, the materials and those kinds of things. And um, um, I think there's enough there to, you know, as a style, a modern style to, to talk about it. Um, I think it is a little bulky, especially on the side that faces the neighbor's side. And it's not more of view protection, those kinds of things. I think it's just, it looks very flat, and it doesn't have the same features that you've put on the other side. And I know that you put less windows and you, you know, raise them higher and those kinds of things. I think that's a good move, but it's still very flat. I mean, you have six inches maybe that comes in on the back portion, but it doesn't have the same elegance that you have on the other side of the massing kind of back, going back and forth on that. So I think if you can work on some of that, I mean, I would make a much better project on that side, too. Um, and I actually, I kind of do like the little piece that's coming off of the existing. Um, I'd almost like to see it being utilized a little bit here, maybe, as a larger piece to kind of bookend that part of it. And then, you know, because I think when you're looking at it from this end of it, they're just boxes that all in all the same elevation. I think that might break it up a little bit. But those are all just design suggestions. Um, but um, I think that's that's pretty much all I have to say for this one. Do we have any thoughts on further discussion? I, I'd be yeah. I'd be willing to uh, discuss 
going a little smaller. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'm kind of just looking in the floor layout on the second floor. There's there's a large open area. There's yeah, there's a couple of three extra rooms. You know, the uh, I mean. There is, is there a way to be able to maybe kick it back on the second floor a little bit more. Break, here's what I'm to break you know, it up. What can they do with this end of the house? You know, to, to get some of that off of that. To... Well, first we need to identify the concerned areas. So uh, once right, we, and, and you know, and, and with the only thing the neighbor will be happy with is no second story because it's going to black. That's not going to happen. There's something's going to go here. So what can we do as a board to kind of... And actually going with the know. flat roof, it reduces the area. Yeah, definitely. The height of it. But it makes it probably bulkier. See, as I was, right. I was, as as I was yeah. assessing this, Mr. Ellis, and, and, and I thought about the same thing, and, and here are my thoughts on it, is when we look through this window, we could kind of see that the view is, is, is this way, right? Because as we look this way, we're looking up into a hillside as That's it goes up. That's what doing, actually. So, I mean, you know, even in that picture, it illustrates where, you know, as, as we look back onto it, there's a steep hillside. So the view of this of this area is, is, of course, this way, going down towards, let's say, the Chevy Chase corridor looking up. And so if we start trimming, you know, this area, we're not really, you know, uh, creating view corridors towards the mountains. Um, this area. Well, wouldn't it? I mean, look at this picture right here. We're talking that corner. We're thought. Well, you know. So I mean, that's. See, I think I think you you would need to like get rid of this whole thing to preserve that. That that's what I'm getting at. I mean, you yeah. could chip some of this away, which would help the second and third bedroom right. besides the master bedroom, and, and that certainly would help. I mean, right. If we alleviate this area. Um, which would basically just limit the second floor addition to say this part and all this is flat um, Then he pretty much has a clear shot, but again um, These pictures I believe are taken in such a way where where you're kind of standing here looking this way But if you just turn a little bit As far as the information that's presented here yeah. the, the view is there so that that's why I don't have an issue with the mass and size now the design is so unique. It, it, it's kind of has this rationalist 1930s oh, yeah. Italian yeah. thing to it that's been modernized with an 80s flair. I mean, it's unique. It's hard to say. But let's get rid of this and let's yeah, get rid of that. No, I totally agree with you on that. I mean, it, I'm not. A, my critique is not of the design. I mean, I, I actually like it. Um, I don't know if it fits on this lot, and I, that's you know right. where it becomes the but issue. I, I, I do understand what you're saying. Uh, because that corner where you're referring to with that little curved pieces, that is the closest part to, the to their neighbor's house. house. Yeah, to the neighbor's house. And so even if you don't capture the view, having a mass that's further away will also yeah. impact. And that's the master bathroom upstairs. And an additional room. And well, you this know. is the uh, mm -hmm. this part, the additional room space. So with the. Without designing it, I mean, yeah, it right. certainly I, could shift over. There's that veranda upstairs. I mean, there's some some ways they might be able to deal with something. Again, we, I think in order for us to to make that, to, for us to go down that route, we need to itemize. I think the problem, and if there is a significant enough of a problem, and then let's work on and coming up solution. for a solution. Right. And and so let's try to answer that first question: is is do we feel as though this house is too big. Too big. Does it need to get shaved in that uh, master bathroom veranda area or master bathroom area? And if, and if the answer is yes, then um, we can certainly start assessing solutions. Yeah, actually, two neighbors you know, brought up the house being big. Um, I was trying to look for Mr. Right, and I, I think we understand that the site is bigger than the neighbors, but right. yet the pad itself is actually the buildable area, and so we have to balance those two things. Yeah, right, exactly. Looking for which one? No, the I'm um, from uh, Mr. Uh, oh, the letter. The email or the letter? From Ivan. Yeah, what Ivan had oh. a, had a comment. Um, if if. I may, as you consider um, the size of the house, okay. uh, because this is something that staff is constantly looking at, um, 
we would be interested in um, in if, as you consider that in your criteria for analyzing that point, that would be useful and helpful to us. We have to have a criteria. <laughs> well, well, for for example, um, when staff considers the mass and scale of of a project, we not only look at what's surrounding, but because very often, and this is something that we struggle with, probably why the DRB was created in the first place. Um, almost always a new house is going to be larger than its neighbor. Right. That's just the nature, nature of, of the new construction and property values, et cetera. So what, what we as staff do is look around and see, okay, where will this house be visible from and what is of the interest to the community? Um, it, and this particular house is on a flag lot. Um, staff made you know a concerted effort to look at um, where this house is visible from and how how the neighbors uh, other than the very next door neighbors would potentially be impacted. So that's that's the criteria that staff uses. If DRB, ha the, the board, has a different criteria, it's very useful for staff to understand that. You know, when I looked at it, I thought actually with the people was on the far hill uh, of Chevy Chase, the opposite side of the canyon were the ones, because from that lot and from standing at the end of the driveway, you can see those houses are, some of them are very massive. And But, you know, the fact is the colors are muted and it's it's built tucked into the hillside. Um, it, it It's just kind of trying to make it fit with the cul-de-sac. And and that's kind of where I'm, I'm stumbling on this. I'm trying to find the... Uh, uh, again, just just so we can move this along, what we've right. got to do, let, let's identify, uh, Mr. Ellis and Mr. Yu, if there is a concern, let, let's identify the area which is maybe in the rear uh, where the master bathroom is and the additional room. That seems to be where that bulk is, and that could easily right. be alleviated. The additional room um, could, just, just by getting rid of the additional room, I mean, you basically get rid of this right. altogether. And uh, by even shifting the master be bedroom over, this um, softens up quite a bit. So that's just a decision that needs to be made fairly quickly is if, if we're going to concentrate on it. And if we do, then we could go down that route because there'll be two people that want to do it, and I'll certainly entertain those thoughts and right. work along with it. I think that's something that we can... Yeah, I mean, that's the pretty much the problem, so is that... That one, the west elevation and, uh, and the, the north side of it, and uh, you know what the solution is. Um, well, then let me just make a, you know, a suggestion. Then, if, if that's that's the problem, what do you need? Pointer. Yeah. So what we have here is uh, uh, the second floor. We have this additional room here, which if if for, if this additional room is basically eliminated here then there would be this room downstairs and we would just have a flat roof right. kind of in this area. Right. And, and that would get rid of a lot of this bulk. And then with this master bathroom, um, it, this plan could shift a little bit this way and then maybe this shifts over because now they don't need this entrance to this additional room. Right. And this master bedroom just mm -hmm. literally shifts over, um, you know, six foot nine, six foot two. Right. And then I'll create six foot two of relief here and and this closet could just basically enter in here so it's very it's very easy very doable uh, fix and I, I'd be if, if, if both members well, the decided whole bathroom to go closet can shift over into the open to below area this but to the east yeah open to below over here uh, and that square foot is that we're not even counting that's part of the bulk Probably a nice room, though. I mean, with the yeah. vertical windows on the outside. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I think we could give them that parameter of reduce the square footage on the top, and then they can work it out. Yeah, exactly. However, yeah, like, right. Well, uh, and we, but we would need to give direction to staff, and and, and if that's right. the direction we're going at, on. Oh, well, I think we could tell them that we want to reduce the massing on the second floor of the end portion here, and then somehow sh make that portion, yeah, concentrate in that area. So there has a step-up effect as we, uh, in a similar way that the front has. 
I think the neighbor also will, will realize a little bit later, just from looking at the sight line and the sun, that there will still be sun in their rooms. That they're not losing. It oh, yeah, they'll get but plenty they'll, of sun from this side. Yeah, it's yeah. it's for, you know, half the day the sun's out on that window anyway. Right. But, you know, yeah. but, have a lot of setbacks, basically. Yeah, but that kind of corner seems pretty yeah. Yeah. egregious. I mean, in fact, you know, this is south and, and you have west, so you, you, right. they'll get afternoon sun. Right. Just the way it is. Yeah. And, and, and by us, the trees that's blocking the, yeah. <laughs> their sun. But by us taking this bulk away, I mean, they'll get more northerly sun, which isn't really direct sun anyways. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, I'm okay with that. Um, should we make a I, and motion? I got one other note, which we didn't really discuss, I guess. The, the, the gate at the end of the driveway, which is always becomes the mm -hmm. last thing you think about. I mean, there's been no proposal design or what they want to do with the gate at all. Have you guys had any discussion? We have not. We have not yet received an example. Right. And if you like, you can condition we'll it to match the balconies or some, something. I, yeah, I would something. It should. You know, there should be some review because that's actually the only piece that's the public is going to see here, and and it should have some thought. In fact, it's probably better for it not to match the railing. Yeah. Glass. <laughs> yeah. Right. I. You know. I, I don't know what they want to do, yeah. but yeah. They, however you. Pr there should be some. Some. We should take a look at that at some point, or staff. I mean, I'll defer. I'm back. okay with yeah, staff reviewing. As long like as somebody reviews it first. To, su to submit. To submit a plan yeah. for the plan gate. For the dime. Right. Okay. And I'm, I'm presuming they're okay on the setback where it's located on here. There. There's a 15 foot front setback. Can the gates open into the front setback? No, they could not. Cannot. So they would have to open to the rear. Right, because they show them opening out. And we and that's easily changed. Yeah. Right. Okay. And then my other kind of comment was, you know, what do we do with the trash and and also the mechanical equipment, which I think was not on your list. I think those were on your list. If I'm not mistaken. Well, they have a lot of space to put it. Yeah. It's, it's yeah exactly. But just kind of again, preferably not in the, next to the neighbor's bedroom. Sure, that does not happen. <laughs> right. You don't go, think that happened in my the house? Rear over there, <laughs> on the northern portion, past the, you know, just, yeah, just next to the that. pool. Yeah. Exactly. I just, you know, and it may, you know, already be existing pool. I don't, you know. Pool equipment. So um, I, I have two, I make a motion, yeah. two conditions to reduce the bulk of the second story at the north side, such as by considering eliminating that additional room and shifting over the bathroom slash closet? Correct. So it would be the northeast side. Northeast side. By, correct. By getting by eliminating the additional room and perhaps shifting the master bathroom or west. And uh, forgive me if I'm missing something, but uh, on the plans, the wall and fence are noted as existing. There was not a wall between those properties, I don't believe, when I was up there on Sunday. I remember seeing that either. The, no. be, I'm sorry, between I thought it was properties? New. Uh, right where the gate, is, the driveway, the gate is down there. It, no, it says new, doesn't it? I see. New six foot. Here it says new. It's a, there's an existing railing on the back, but this wall is there's no wall along here now because I stood there and looked at the. I don't recall. It's marked N on the plan, which yeah. Because I mean, you can see it in here. I don't think there's a wall. This is there's existing no wall. There's railing. been a confirmation that there is there's no wall, no and there are oh, there you go. New and they are proposing wall. a new six foot high wall, which would require a building permit. Right. Okay. So to uh, with that one condition, and then a second one would be to submit plans for the gates for staff review. Yeah, I would like, I mean, could they, can we decorative the wall? Again, that's the only thing you're seeing from the cul-de-sac. This would be the wall that runs along the interior property line? Well, if you look at it, it starts at the gate, and then it cuts across and curves here. So this is all street frontage. I mean, yeah, there's a um, wall across the half of the street frontage. Yeah, that is, that is something uh, for for the board to know. That's something that the council has recently asked us to start reviewing. That's right. It's something that previously wasn't part of walls. The, walls yeah, walls and, walls and fences. fences. So uh, that are visible from the street. Good. So there's thank one you. that you can put on your list. <laughs> thank you for catching that because we had. I, I'm seeing it noted as existing in the plans I have, so thank you for ah, catching cool. that. 
There's an existing railing. It's but just uh, one more okay. correction on the plan. It says existing color stamped on their driveway, and it's actually a it's, it's a it, it's a permeable it's a, paver. Yeah, the permeable paver, and I so believe that they're maintaining the permeable paver as is. Is that correct? Is that a nod? Yes, I so have a nod. So let's change this to match the what's existing. So it'd be to, to match remain, the existing. Yeah. So we'll make sure that um, any new driveway matches the existing pavers. Okay. Uh, with that said, I'm assuming that this, uh, there's a motion for? A uh, motion for uh, approval of the design with the conditions as stated. All right, I have a motion made by Board Member Simonian, a second by? Can I ask, does it come back to us, or is this all telling? This would Started. be approval with conditions, so it would be for staff review. Because the other option would be to have them come back one more time. We have them, we don't have that option. Then well, we there is an option, you can make them, if this motion fails, you can then make a motion to return for redesign with conditions. Well, or a continuation because we'd be asking for more information on the <laughs> materials, the <laughs> wall and the uh, gate, because this we don't have that information right now, right? But. You'd be essentially you're you're essentially requesting modifications also to the massing or to the bulk of the second story in the rear. Um, if There's if I may, um, if if the board is comfortable with uh, those recommendations, staff is certainly com comfortable working with this applicant. This applicant has been very flexible in working with us all along. So we would be comfortable that they understand the direction that has been given as long as the board is comfortable with that. I guess my only comment would be that with our two missing members, I wouldn't want to subject them to another bout of the round. <laughs> yeah, I myself personally, I'd like to say, hey, you know what, let's bring it back and let us take a look at it again. But with two guys out of here, I think that probably is. They could abstain if. Well, uh, they won't because they will have input, and uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to subject yeah, them to that. Yeah, I don't want to subject the applicant to that. So, um, I'll do, I'll go with I'll second the motion. Okay. And there's a second by Board Member Ellis in terms of a roll call. Board Member Ellis. Yes. Board Member Simonian. Yes. Chairman Yu. Yes. The motion passes three zero. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And that brings us to. So continuing the agenda. You know, I'm, I'm ex we have a meeting. We to still have a hearing. We, we have our give us no, a couple no, minutes. Not We're not quite done, but give us a minute, and I'll be happy to. We had some minutes from Go another. Ahead with the minutes. That's right. No, no minutes. Oh, actually, no minutes? there are no minutes because uh, record of decision was a little tardy, so those have not been completed. So okay. we'll move that to next. next we'll time. move that for next time. And and just so that you understand why that happens sometimes, um, because there's uh, there is a lot of back and forth. Um, we we do our best to read back the conditions, but then when they get written. We want to make sure that they're that they're absolutely as accurate as we can possibly make them. So there is a review process for that piece. As much as we'd like to get it out the next day, uh, we do have to do our dil due diligence because that is the 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 hanger on which we we hang our hat when we work with applicants. Is, is there a window though that you have? I mean, there's a certain number of days for the, it, for the applicant. To... There is there is no requirement, and that's because the applicant is is also in the room, and there is a record of the meeting. meeting. On they already have that, something that, they can work off of. Exactly, gotcha. and we do begin to work with them, you know, immediately as soon as they would like. We do our very best to get it out as quickly as we can. Right. We understand. Well, then, Thank you. There's nothing else. I move we adjourn. And this is a motion to adjourn at 7:35. <laughs> a second. I'll second. I don't think we need a second. We don't, we don't need a second. Yeah. Robert, you don't need a second. We don't need a second. We'll They're running a different different set of rules.